implementation and cellular therapy section, uh, oncology uh, center at King Faisal Specialist Hospital, as well as I'm a professor of internal medicine in Al Faisal University. Uh, in fact, uh, today activity going to start shortly. And today we shall talk about update in multiple myeloma. The first uh, speaker will be Dr. Amr al Hambali. Can we have next slide, please? Uh, and of course, uh, educational, uh, educational objectives, as you can see. Well, after attending this meeting, delegates should be able to reflect on strategies for the practical management of patients with multiple myeloma and chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And to evaluate the latest updates in CLL and multiple myeloma and how it will potentially have an impact on daily clinical practice. Uh, next, please. Uh, Next, the first, can we have next pl slide, please? The, the, the first, I'm the chairman and already I endorse myself. And uh, the first speaker, next, please. The first speaker going to be uh, Dr. Amr al Hambali, who is also a consultant in hematology and stem cell transplantation and cellular therapy section, oncology center at King Faisal Specialist uh, Hospital. Uh, Dr. Hambali going to talk about uh, frontline management of uh, multiple myeloma. And at this stage, without any further delay, I would like Dr. Hambali to start his talk. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So uh, I will start uh, this meeting by discussing uh, state of the art upfront therapy of uh, multiple myeloma. Um, multiple myeloma is defined by clonal proliferation of plasma cells in the bone marrow with end organ damage, including skeletal destruction, hypercalcemia, renal insufficiency, and anemia. Uh, multiple myeloma should be distinguished from MGUS and small smoldering myeloma, since these entities at this current time don't uh, require any treatment. Okay. It's not moving now. Okay, so by definition, small, smoldering multiple myeloma is myeloma without end organ damage. Uh, serum monoclonal protein is three gram per deciliter or higher, and bone marrow plasma cell are between 10 and 60 percent. MGUS is a pre-malignant, pre-myeloma state with protein of less than three gram per deciliter. Uh, bone marrow has less than 10 percent of plasma cells, of, and of course, there is no end organ damage. It's important to recognize the change uh, that happened in myeloma definition uh, as adopted by the International Myeloma Working Group. So active myeloma, which is myeloma that requires therapy is currently defined as more than 10% plasma cells in the bone marrow or biopsy proven plasma cytoma with any of the following. So any of the CRAB uh, criteria, uh, if we have 60% or more plasma cell in the bone marrow, uh, serum-free light chain ratio of 100 or more, or if we have more than one focal lesion of five millimeter or more on MRI. All these are indications to start therapy. The standard staging system that is currently used in multimyeloma is the revised ISS, which relies on uh, beta-2 microglobulin and albumin level, along with the presence of chromosomal abnormalities and LDH level. Uh, and this Kaplan-Meier curve shows the difference in survival between stage one, two, and three myeloma with the statistical significant differences. Multiple myeloma is classified as standard risk or high risk, mainly based on chromosomal abnormalities and other high risk features. Important also to recognize a definition of double hit and triple hit myeloma based on the number of high risk genetic abnormalities present. 
and here we show the grave outcome of double hit and triple hit myeloma with overall survivor of less than a year. Now uh, let's discuss uh, treatment options in newly diagnosed multiple myeloma. Can I drugs in myeloma. This question was studied extensively in multiple trials uh, from different countries. Some of these trials showed a clear benefit of uh, autologous stem cell transplant in improving overall survival in myeloma. Others and, and eventually survival, but did not really show uh, overall survival benefit. Just remember that these studies have different designs, different conditioning regimens, and different intensity of therapy. Now, one famous trial is the IFM2009, which was published in New England Journal in 2017. In this trial, newly diagnosed myeloma patients were randomized to receive uh, RVD, which is Revlimid, Valkade, and Hexamethasone, uh, uh, only without transplant for eight cycles, versus receiving three cycles of uh, uh, RVD, followed by autologous stem cell transplant, followed by another cycle, another two cycles of RVD and both arms continued on Revlimid maintenance for one year. Uh, I took this picture from presentation in ASH meeting 2015, since they considered this study as the highlight of the myeloma session in that meeting. As shown, this study showed that transplant has better rate of MRD negativity, better for year uh, progression-free survival and time to progression with low transplant rate mortality and high feasibility. Four-year overall survival was high in both arms and differences uh, could not be made because of the short follow-up. But they concluded that transplant was already associated with reduced risk of death due to myeloma. And based on this study, authors concluded that transplant should remain the standard of care. So in our current practice, high-dose therapy with auto stem cell transplant continues to be standard of care for young patients with multiple myeloma based on improvement in response rate event-free survival and progression-free survival. However, in selected uh, standard risk myeloma patients, auto stem cell transplant can be delayed until relapse. And this, uh, this, is, uh, this practice has been done in many uh, centers. Just a few words on minimal residual disease in myeloma. It's well known that MRD negativity is associated with improved uh, progression-free survival and overall survival. But at this time, we don't have data for, from randomized trial in myeloma that changing MRD positive to MRD negative can lead to better outcome and should not be used uh, as the goal of therapy. Uh, the exception will be in very poor prognosis uh, myeloma like double hit or triple hit, uh, which uh, in such situations, it can make a difference. So what's the best choice for induction therapy in uh, transplant eligible multiple myeloma? I will show you evidence that use of triplet regimens with novel agents is better than use of historical chemotherapy regimens or use of uh, doublet or quadruplet. Historical regimens are the regimens that used to be used uh, uh, before the introduction of novel agents, and they are chemotherapy based. Uh, one of the famous regimens used in treatment of myeloma is VADS, vincristine, adriamycin, and dexamethasone. In a randomized trial that compared VAD to VD, which is valkate dexamethasone, showed a rate with a trend toward uh, improved and progression-free survival in the VD arm. And based on this trial, it was accepted to use valkate as the new standard of care. Uh, then another trial compared the VCD regimen, valkate cyclophosphamide dexamethasone, with the same regimen but replacing cyclophosphamide with adriamycin, doxorubicin. And results showed equivalence between the two arms, but the toxicity was higher in the PAD uh, regimen. And that's why uh, VCD continued uh, to be the uh, choice in, in this trial. So chemotherapy in general, uh, should not be used in induction of myeloma. Of course, the exception is cyclophosphamide, which is uh, uh, a very useful drug to be combined with novel agents. 
Before we talk about doublets or triplets, I want just to highlight this landmark trial that established the use of lower dose dexa dexamethasone as the preferred way to give it instead of the old way with the pulse-like approach. And we use a small d in such regimens uh, to uh, you know, donate the, the, uh, the weekly dose of dexamethasone. Uh, if you look at the safety profile, uh, you see side effects are much less with the small d, with the trend even uh, towards better overall survival. Uh, now, in this SWOG trial, VRD regimen was compared with RD in newly diagnosed uh, multiple myeloma who are eligible for stem cell transplant. This trial established the superiority of triplet therapy using VRD as compared to doublet RD regimen. Superiority was in terms of response rate, progression free survival, and overall survival. Toxicity, of course, was, was higher with the triplet, but it was manageable in general. And based on this, VRD was established as the, the new standard of care. So how about quadruplet versus triplet? Uh, this study compared the VTD uh, regimen to VTD with adding cyclophosphamide, VTDC. Uh, both regimens showed equivalent high remission rate, but toxicity, of course, was much higher with, with the quadruplet, and there was no adding benefit to, to do this approach. So, uh, so as we mentioned, adding the cyclophosphamide to a VTD regimen did not add uh, to benefit, so it's currently not recommended as, as a choice. But remember, uh, with the increased use of monoclonal antibodies uh, now in myeloma, we will see antibodies-based quadruplets are being the new standard uh, of care and are going to become the new standard of care. So uh, for now, triplet uh, wins the preferred regimen of induction, uh, and the question is, uh, which one? So we talked about VRD regimen as the standard of care uh, regimen based on the comparison with RD and showing the benefit. Uh, then we have this IFM randomized trial that compared the VTD to a VCD. And uh, of course, results uh, as shown were in favor of VTD regimen in terms of improved uh, remission rate. A VTD showed better, uh, very good partial remission and uh, uh, partial remission rates, higher number of CD34 stem cell harvested. The side effect profile was different between the two arms since more myelosuppression was seen with VCD compared to more neurotoxicity seen with VTD. But it was concluded that VTD should be the uh, regimen uh, of a choice at this time. Uh, our personal experience in King Faisal Hospital with VTD showed poor tolerance, mainly because of the neuropathy, and it's not a preferred regimen in our center. As per NCCN 2020, still the two preferred regimens are VRD and VCD uh, as a first choice. In King Faisal Hospital, our current approach is to use VCD as our preferred regimen, and if no adequate response after two cycles, we switch to VRD. How about other triplets? Now this uh, Maya trial, uh, which is a New England uh, Journal published trial, compared the daratumumab, berivlimid, uh, DEX versus RD in transplant ineligible patients, and uh, uh, results shown better remission rate and progression-free survival. Uh, although this uh, trial was intended for transplant ineligible patients, still it gives us a potential option to be used in transplant eligible patients as an alternative uh, to VRD if patient has intolerance uh, to that regimen and uh, we don't have any other choice. Another triplet trial is, uh, uh, triplet is the KRD, carfilzomib, rivlimid, dex. Uh, uh, the endurance trial compared KRD to VRD in transplant ineligible patients and showed equivalent uh, results as shown. And based on this, uh, KRD is not recommended as initial therapy, especially with higher toxicity profile than uh, VRD. Uh, there are special situations which mandate choosing a specific regimen. For patients with renal impairment, VCD is the preferred uh, regimen because of the limitation uh, in using lenalidomide and renal failure patients. In countries where lenalidomide is not available, VTD can be used instead of VRD. And in patients with plasma cell leukemia or significant extramedullary disease, the preferred regimen is to use intensive therapy with VTD PACE. 
Uh, I will show you quickly some recent data on adding daratumumab to standard uh, regimens. The uh, Cassiopeia trial looked at VTD with or without uh, uh, daratumumab in transplant eligible patients uh, with the schema uh, as shown in this figure. And this trial showed higher remission rate with deeper response as shown with better rate of MRD negativity. Interestingly, the benefit was more significant in higher risk myeloma with reduction of the risk of progression or death. Uh, another trial is the uh, Perseus trial, which looked at VRD regimen with or without uh, daratumumab. Results of this uh, trial are not published yet, but the initial analysis showed a clear benefit of adding daratumumab to high risk myeloma group, especially double and triple head myeloma. And based on this, Mayo Clinic recommend, recommended through their MSMART guidelines to use VRD in standard myeloma, uh, standard risk myeloma, while the preferred regimen for high risk or double or triple head myeloma is to add daratumumab to VRD regimen. Let's move quickly to the uh, induction therapy in transplant in eligible patients. Uh, Milfalan based regimens are used to be the standard of care in such patients, but the problem with Milfalan is the concern regarding stem cell damage and risk of secondary leukemia. And current guidelines recommend to use either VRD or DRD as the preferred uh, regimens. In transplant eligible patients, VRD is administered for eight to 12 cycles followed by maintenance therapy with single agent lenalidomide. In frail elderly patients, lower doses of lenalidomide and dexamethasone is recommended. And dexazomib can be considered in place of bortezomib in patients who are unable uh, to receive uh, bortezomib due to travel or uh, lack of access. And we mentioned the Maya trial that showed the superiority of uh, DRD versus RD. Another uh, regimen that got FDA approval in USA is the VMPD, Valcade, Milfalan, Prednisone, and Dara, based on the Alcyon trial. And uh, this uh, trial randomized the VMP versus VMPD, and VMPD showed better response and uh, progression-free survival. A Clarion trial looked at KMP, Carfilzomab, Milfalan, Prednisone, versus VMP, Valcade, Milfalan, Prednisone, and this showed similar PFS and overall survival. And because of the high side effect profile concluded that KMP is not recommended in such population. So according to NCCN, preferred regimens in transplant ineligible include VRD, DRD, VCD, or RD in the frail elderly patients. And the MSMART Mayo Clinic guidelines recommend the use of either VRD or DRD in standard risk patients, while to use VRD in high risk uh, patients. Just uh, quickly, uh, uh, important aspects in uh, myeloma treatment. Tandem transplant in general is not recommended routinely, but can be considered in 17P minus patients with double or triple head myeloma. Allogenic stem cell transplant is not recommended at upfront therapy in myeloma. And the routine use of consolidation is not recommended because, uh, uh, sorry, uh, it's not recommended, uh, but it can be used in situations where uh, there is still persistent disease post autologous stem cell transplant. And just a few words regarding maintenance therapy. Studies showed improvement in PFS and overall survival with the use of lenalidomide post auto transplant as maintenance. But you need to discuss this with your patients since there is increase, uh, two to three times increase in the risk of second malignancies with such approaches. And in high risk patients, it's recommended to use bortezomib as maintenance. And for patients unable to access bortezomib, then exazomib is a reasonable choice. The optimal duration of maintenance is unknown since long-term benefit use is associated with patients uh, and financial toxicities along with inconvenience uh, to patients. Also, many patients can benefit from drug-free trial. Currently, there is a randomized trial to compare two years of lenalidomide maintenance versus until uh, progression. And with this, I conclude my talk. Thank you very much uh, and ready for any questions.